My name is Scott Stivers, and welcome to what I'm calling Beer and Theology. It's a working title for now, but it pretty much sums up what I hope to cover in this video series. Beer and Theology. Alcohol and religion haven't always had the best of relationship in the United States, but the tradition of drinking beer and talking about the meaning of life goes back as far as, well, recorded history. Hold on, Scott. We all know that beer is alcohol, but what is theology, and what does it have to do with religion? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that, because I don't want to assume everybody knows the meaning of all the technical jargon that I'll be using. What is the meaning of this? In fact, I will really try to watch out for the religious lingo that tends to slip into my conversations just because I'm so used to using it. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to avoid using it. I want to explain what the words mean precisely so that I can use them. Some of these highfalutin words actually make things easier to understand, like the working title for this video series. Theology is two old Greek words stuck together. In fact, a lot of words are old Greek words or old Latin words or old Greek words turned into Latin, turned into something else, and translated backwards, stuck together. Where was I? Oh, right. Theology. Theo, or theos, is God, and ology is the study of a particular subject. Now, I couldn't very well call a uh, YouTube video series Beer and the field of study and analysis of treats of God and God's attributes and relations to the universe, divine study of the things of religious truth, divinity, and so on. I think beer and theology go together pretty well. Who hasn't seen a TV show or commercial about people drinking beer and talking about life and the universe and the meaning of everything? Tell us what you know, Norm. God's in his heaven and something, something, something. <laughs> How about a beer? Yeah, that's it. And heck, a ton of jokes start with... A priest, a rabbi, and a minister walk into a bar. <laughs> With theology being so hard to define, it sure is nice that beer is so easy to define. We all know what beer is. Ah, and here it is, Budweiser, the king of beers. Listen, when I was growing up in the 1970s and 80s, there were three networks on television. ABC, CBS, and NBC, and there were three beers. Bud, Miller, and Coors. Come on! Seriously, though, here's where this series is coming from. Often things get handed down to us that we simply accept as the be-all and end-all of the subject, like with beer. It wasn't until 2011 that I knew that beer could be anything different than what Michael Jackson called... Yeah, yeah. Not that Michael Jackson. What Michael Jackson called pale lager beers, vaguely of the Pilsner style. They do not all taste the same, but the differences between them are often of minor consequence. <laughs> Miller Genuine Draft was as far outside the box as I got. Unless you count um, Guinness, which... I didn't even realize was a beer at the time. 
They do not all taste the same, but the differences between them are often of minor consequence. And then there are the mainline Protestant Christian churches. In my small hometown, there were Lutherans, Methodists, Baptists, Congregationalists, and I guess I'll count the Episcopalians, which I didn't even realize were Protestant at the time. Oh, there's another one, Protestant. In the year 1517, a Catholic monk named Martin Luther started a religious movement, it was huge, called the Reformation, which resulted in lots of people leaving the Roman Catholic Church and starting their own churches. You can learn more about the Reformation by following the links in the description below. If the Roman Catholic Church was the king of beers, then Martin Luther started the craft brewing renaissance. In fact, I credit Martin Luther with starting beer and theology in the first place. According to author Andrew Pedigree, thousands flocked to Wittenberg to hear him preach or in hope of attending his lectures. Those admitted to his circle of friends enjoyed the particular privilege of joining him at table where Luther would relax and hold forth. This was Luther's especial domain. The day's labor passed, he would sit with his friends and talk. Fueled by his wife's excellent beer, conversation would become general, discursive, and sometimes unbuttoned. Often, one of his more eager dinner companions would make a record of his master's pronouncements. Luther, a university teacher for 30 years and used to being surrounded by note-takers, thought little of this. The notes taken at these gatherings would eventually be compiled in a book known as Table Talk. I thought about using Table Talk as a title for this video series, but I'm no Martin Luther. In fact, I'm not even sure I want to use the title Beer and Theology because I'm no Dwayne Preeby either. Dwayne Preeby was my theology professor at Wartburg Seminary, and every Thursday after class, Dr. Preeby would hold forth at Dubuque Star Brewery. His weathered Bible in one hand and a pint of whatever pumpkin-infused what's-its they had on tap in the other. It, now that I think of it, that's the real time I ran into craft brewing, but I didn't realize it at the time. Apparently, there are a lot of things that I don't realize at the time. Hmm. My classmates and I would talk with Dr. Preeby about what it means to be a person. What does it mean in the Apostles' Creed what, that Jesus descended into hell? Uh, what will eternity in the kingdom of God look like? We'd touch on theology, philosophy, physics, evolutionary biology, and anything else that came to mind. Like the discussions at Luther's table, they were general and discursive. But I never saw Dwayne Preeby become unbuttoned. Nobody wanted to see that. Sadly, I don't think anybody recorded those conversations, so there will never be a book called Dubuque Star Talk. Dubuque Star Talk, The Next Generation. Dubuque Star Talk, The Next Generation. No, no. Dubuque Star Brewery closed in 1999. I've always looked back fondly on those beer and theology sessions, but I wanted to add my own twist. The top four selling beers in the United States are Bud Light, Coors Light, Budweiser, and Miller Light. That represents over one third of the entire market. Now, <clears throat> of the top 10 beers in the United States, Anheuser-Busch InBev own six of those ten, and of those six, three are what are called light beers. Now, <clears throat> these days I tend to agree with what beer guru Jeff Allworth says when he says, light beer is meant to be drunk ice cold, fast, and with as little attention as possible. Ice cold, fast, and with a little attention as possible could also describe the way that we reflect on religion in our society these days, too. And so, I commend to you Shell's Keller Pills. Now, <clears throat> I chose Shell's 
because it's the second oldest family-owned brewery in the United States. The first oldest, and actually just plain oldest brewery in the United States, is called uh, Jungling in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Shells is in New Ulm, Minnesota, and was founded in 1860. It survived the Dakota Uprising of 1862, Prohibition from 1919 to 1933, and the rise of the megabreweries through the 1970s. I chose Shell's Pilsner because, as I mentioned before, the megabreweries that hold one-third of the market basically brew uh, something vaguely of the Pilsner style. Shell's describes its brew as a crisp, dry Pilsner with firm hop bitterness. Our Keller Pils is unfiltered and full of character. The addition of Callista hops lends a fruity aroma of citrus, stone fruits, and berries. Golden in color and balanced in flavor, it stands tall against its lighter-bodied, low-hopped relatives. Describing all the differences between these beers will have to wait for another episode, but I will say, sometimes, at least when it comes to brewing beer, fundamentalism is a good thing. The only thing that I will point out is that Shell's Keller Pills is unfiltered. That means it's going to look a little more cloudy, but the flavors will be more robust on account of the leftover microscopic bits. Mmm, microscopic bits. So, what I hope to do in the coming series is talk about beer and theology. The talk will be about theology and about beer. There will likely be some surprising connections. The talk will be general, discursive, and, uh, knowing me, probably very unbuttoned. Just saying. When it comes to beer, I'll be focusing on brew pubs that are local to me. And for me, that means the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the surrounding suburbs. And hey, if I run out of brewer pubs around here, I'll go on a road trip. Responsibly, of course. I'll say as much as I can about the brewery and their beer, as well as the history and processes for beer making and beer brewing in general. When I can, I will put links to the breweries and their beers, and also to any books I reference, in the description below. I'm not pretending to be an expert or authority on the subject just yet, so if you have any corrections or opinions, or if you'd like to share some experiences with beer, brewing, or drinking, put them in the comments below. Now, when it comes to theology, I have a shelf full of books downstairs that I hope to discuss, but I want this to be a collaborative effort, so if you have any theological topic, or a person, or a book that you would like me to feature, just put those in the comments below as well. I will do my best to be fair and balanced when I'm describing my understanding of other people's perspectives and theological positions. At the same time, I am going to feel free to share my own unvarnished opinions just as they are. Because what use would it be if I didn't actually have a, a position that would be boring and nobody would learn anything at that point? Besides, I'll be drinking beer and I'll be unbuttoned! Ah, ha, ha, ha. <clears throat> Sorry. Whether you already know about theology and want to learn about beer, or you already know a lot about beer and want to learn about theology, or vice versa, or both, or whatever combination, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and watch your uh, recommended videos feed on YouTube for the next installment. I'll be right here at the table, my Bible in one hand and my beer in both others. Let's talk beer and theology. Theology and beer? Uh, theology on tap. Luther and the Loggers. Yeah. Leftover microscopic bits.